Attaching Patch Box Covers to Brunswick Rifles, William Hovey Smith, 2014. I'm the author of Extreme Muzzle Loading, and here we attach two types of covers to Brunswick Rifles. Now you will notice here that I made a cover plate, and this is cut out of a piece of black plastic from the bottom of an old mortar tub, and that I'm going to detach from here and refit it to fit this original rifle. To give you something more of a close-up, you can see the cavity on the old rifle here and the one on the new. Grossly they have the same elements but they are different sides. Now this is of course the plate from here and when I put it on the old rifle, wow! Uh, yeah, that's quite a bit of difference here. So we're going to fit this to this gun. Now to do that, we're going to have to attach a screw, and I'm going to put it right down here in the middle. I'm going to cut this stick so it's just a friction fit down in this channel and against this end here, and then that'll be enough just to hold this plate in place until we do more serious work with the rifle. Our attempt at using the old cover plate from here and just cutting it down to fit this gun didn't work because the screw holes were positioned over nothing but empty space, so consequently they didn't grab. So I went ahead and took our saber saw attachment and cut another piece from the bottom of my mortar tub, and so now we'll position the screws further up here so they will have something to grab hold to, and we did a wedge fit here with a stick that will just hold a central screw here. And this can be easily removed if anyone ever wants to actually do a more authentic replacement of the patch box. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and set the other two. Okay, that's good. Okay, first one done. I want to show you some of the details of the inletting with this patch box. But here you have the patch box itself. Okay, it opens like this. So when we opened it, what we found was that it would not clear on the inside here. So we went ahead and removed some wood over this way. Then we found, once we closed it, it would fit but it was still about a quarter inch or so from going all the way into the stock. And it was being blocked by these shoulders right here. So I've already removed one right here. And this one I'm in the process of cutting back to here, which should ease the problem and move the whole lock plate back in this direction, which is what we want to do. The way you work these carving tools is that you can use them by chisels, but you go slow. You make your cuts vertically, and this sort of outlines the general nature of the work. This is what you want to remove here. So you set your limits. I want to put a stab right down here. And that instantly displaced a little wood, which is fine, because we want that wood to go anyway. And then we proceed just to slowly cut out and move wood. This is not a one bang and it's all done kind of thing. Go slow. You have an innate problem with this chisel bit. 
in that it is beveled on both sides. Okay? So it leaves an incline. It doesn't cut straight. So in that case, what you do is you put it at an angle to the work like this, and you turn it as you cut. And that will straighten up your cut. So that's how you solve that problem. But you go slow and sort of clean up as you go. If you see a little rough edge, go ahead and take it off. When you get down to the bottom, you can take this carving tool and then clean up on the bottom edges here. Okay. And also use it to make your vertical. How we did. Let's see if we're getting closer. Well, and indeed we are. Obviously, we need to go a little further back here. But yeah, this is starting to work. We have about got it back to here. So we're almost all the way back to where we need to be. But something is bearing high. And as you open it, it feels like it's these heavy shoulders right here and this. I need to allow clearance for that by cutting an insert here. And I believe that will help. And I may need to take these shoulders down. So these are going to be the next two areas I'm going to work on. Now we have the patch box just about nice. It's inleted as far back as it can, needs to go, but you notice it rocks. It's being hung up right along in here. And yeah, we're going to have to remove some wood, I'm afraid. Okay. Go ahead and make a scribe here. Wow, that's quite a bit of wood. All right, if that's what it takes, that's what it takes, and that's what we'll do. This is very touchy stuff here because you don't want to split out any of your finish. So what you do at, on the scribe, I've already taken the chisel here and tapped it down and outlined it like this. And now I'm coming along and taking out pieces up to that edge. And you see I've got a piece that's split here. Let's see if we can get it. A little bit. Okay, got that split out. And maintain the edge thus far. Okay, we're doing do it fair. So this is how you get started, and then you just work down another layer and another layer until probably it takes about three goes like this before you actually get it down to where you need it to be down here. We are getting very nearly there on the inletting. Now the lock plate will drop into the work, as you see. It is still a little bit high here, so I have some wood to remove from right there. It is still a little 
gap here so it could go a little bit more forward although it's in binding there so I think this is about as far as we can get this lock plate to go I am going to remove a little wood through here to drop it down but basically this is going to stand proud over the top of the stock a little bit ordinarily you would remove this when you sanded the whole thing together but since we've already finished the stock we won't do that step again but yeah yeah this is fairly well getting there well, this is a case of well when you know you're done what we've done now is we have increased the depth of the inletting all the way around and we have removed some more wood as you say well okay and now when you take the lock plate and you drop it in it should settle in it should be stable it should not rock either way so yeah okay now that's pretty solid what I'm going to do about the latch uh, this is the latch right here supposedly this hook comes through this port well that would put it about here and there's nothing in the world for it to attach to there should be a screw here connecting it to something uh, attached to the stock which would mean putting a block in here and cementing it in and then you would have a latch that would work plus removing the wood beneath it so it would have some room to spring because this is spring steel after all and that's the way the latch would work but you would run the utility of the patch box because uh, most of the space would be taken up by this block of wood and latch from here back whoa so that makes the patch box about worthless and so now it's time to set this screw we'll do a pilot hole and then we'll set it and then we'll have an attached patch box I never did seal the wood on this patch box so we're going to go ahead and do that now this dry wood is just soaking it up I'm not too worried about getting the finish on uh, about getting on my finish because this will just wipe off and I'll get that off now, right now well this is why you wax your gun stocks okay we'll let this dry and then we'll attach the patch box well now that the screw is in I see we have a little high spot right there all this is good so we still have a little wood to remove on the inside but basically yeah yeah we're about there guys here is what the finished gun looks like with the patch box installed now, I am the author of prize-winning books including Extreme Muzzle Loading, Backyard Deer Hunting, Crossbow Hunting, and Practical Bow Fishing. And all of these are available as softcover and e-books. I have an eight-book e-book series out for 2013-14, including building or restoring your own muzzle loader. The brass patch box cover is sold by Atlanta Cutlery with their complete rifles. Now, if there is enough demand, they may also sell them with their parts rifles or as separate items. For more information on my books, blogs, and more than 325 videos, you can go to my website at www.hovismith.com. Good hunting and good eating from the outdoors. Goodbye. And God bless.